Hey, what is going on guys? Arvizad Stealth here, and in today's video, I have the ultimate guide to escape low elo for season 10. So we're going to be going over multiple topics that you'll need to apply to your game to see growth in season 10. And if you're able to apply everything in this video, I can pretty much guarantee that your rank will skyrocket throughout the season. Now, if you have a question about something in the video, if you're unsure of anything, the best way for you to guarantee that that question gets answered is by checking out my stream over on Twitch. I try to be really active with my Twitch chat on my stream, answering all your guys' questions. I'll be live as this video goes up. So if you're watching it in the first couple hours, I'll be streaming over on Twitch. So if you do want to come over and check it out, there is going to be a link down in the description below. So the first topic we're going to go over here has to do with just not being afraid to make mistakes. A lot of players in lower elos, what they're going to do in the laning phase is they're just going to sit back in lane, they're just going to farm, they're not going to try to play aggressive at all, and they're just basically going to be coin flipping games. That's what you'll hear like a lot of, I guess, higher elo players call it, just coin flipping games to where you're not actually really doing anything in the game, you're just kind of hoping that your team does well so that you end up winning that game, and if you, if you continue to do this, if you don't actually try to stress yourself in the laning phase, you don't try to make mistakes and then learn from those mistakes, you're not really going to get better as a player. You have to realize that by stressing yourself in the laning phase, by limit testing, by making mistakes, this is going to help you out tremendously in the long term. It's not going to help you so much out in the short term, like you might lose a couple games for it, but by looking back at your mistakes, by understanding, okay, if I didn't use this ability there, what if I won the trade? If I backed off here, what if I won the trade? Just taking a look at how you're losing trades or how you're winning trades in the laning phase and then revising those for your future games is going to help you out a ton for season 10. So when going back and looking at your replays and looking at what you should be improving on, the best ways to do this or the simplest way to do this is just take a look at each and every one of your deaths. A lot of players in low elo tend to die way too much every single game. So start by just looking at how you're dying and just fix that for your future game. So for example, if you're dying to like a gank very early on in lane or something and you don't have a ward out, then fix that for your next games. Hyper focus on that in your next games. Make sure you're not dying to that same gank. If you end up like losing a bad trade in the laning phase or something like that, which ends up getting you killed in lane, then just fix that for your next game as well. You should be just really focused on whatever you ended up messing up in your last game. Really focus on just fixing that in your next game and not letting it happen again. So for number three here, going into each and every single one of your games, you got to make sure you have a basic plan mapped out as to how you're going to win the game and then run down some different early game scenarios. The four most basic and most important things you should be taking away from the loading screen is number one, look at your early game matchup or just look at your matchup in lane and ask yourself what you need to do to win that matchup. Look at early game skirmish potential of both teams. Look at the enemy roaming potential and then also look at the jungle matchup. So I'll just give you guys an example here as to how I would break down this loading screen. So first thing, look at my matchup. I notice I'm going up against a pike. He's got smite as well. So immediately what I can take from this is that he's just going to have less kill pressure in the laning phase. He might look to go for some like cheesy strategy to where he invades my raptor camp early on or to where he looks to go for scuttle crab. So I got to be aware of that as well. I know in this matchup, I can trade pretty aggressively into pike in the laning phase. So I already have that in my mind before I even get into the game. Second thing to take a look at is early game skirmish potential. So it's myself and Wukong. We're going up against Pike and Evelyn. So no real hard CC in this matchup here. Like there's nothing that can just lock you down and that can burst you out immediately. So basically whoever gets the jump in this matchup here, whoever starts damaging or starts jumping on each other first is probably going to end up winning that enemy roaming potential. They don't really have any champions that are going to look to uh, roam on me like at level six. They don't have something like a Pantheon top lane or a Kled top lane. They have a Poppy there. So I don't need to worry about that too much. The Pike mid, he is going to be rushing team at. He is going to be going Moby boots. So that's something I do need to be aware with. When I got, when I would get into a game like this, I just ping it out for my team. I'd let them realize that they do have a Pike on the enemy team. We do need to be aware of that. Just listen to my pings when he is missing because he is going to be roaming a lot and then for the jungle matchup there like Evelyn into Wukong both are relatively weak in the early game like I'm not too worried about an early game gank from the Evelyn there 
She doesn't have the best gank potential in the early game. I don't need to like get an early ward level two really. She's not gonna level two gank me. If that were something like a Xin Zhao or a Jarvin or just any level two gank jungler, then I would play differently. But with Evelyn, you can play a lot more aggressively in the early game. Number four is something that I think if you take note of, if you really focus on in your games, it's something that can almost instantly improve your rank, and that is to learn how to punish and play off cooldowns and power spikes throughout the game, especially in the laning phase. So, for example, you're playing something like Darius up in the top lane. You know he's got a really good level two all-in, or he's got good all-in potential level two, so you should be pushing for that level two. Once you hit it, you should be looking to trade aggressively. If you're level two before the enemy hits level two, if they're still level one, and then look to play aggressive. This is also so important for down in the bot lane. Like you can get so many early kills at level two down in the bot lane if you just push for that level two, hit it before the opponent, and then look to play aggressive. Not only playing off of power spikes, but also just playing off of cooldowns as well in the laning phase. If you notice the enemy just use a high value ability on the wave, or they just miss a high value ability, and they're not going to deal any damage to you if that ability is down, look to move up. Watching the background gameplay here, Echo is going to just use his Q on the wave here in a second, and I'm level 3 as well. He's level 3 as well now too, but when he uses Q on the wave like that, he's and he uses E forward as well, like immediately look to punish that. Notice how I just move forward, I trade in to him. I burn his flash. I get stunned there, so I wasn't able to like pick up the kill. Maybe if I like flash forward a little bit there and like dodge the W, I would have actually killed him. So a bit of a misplay, but nevertheless, it's just always being cognizant of punishing enemies' cooldowns. Like if they're just wasting spells in the laning phase, don't just let them sit there. Move forward, punish that, and you're going to find yourself getting a ton of early game kills if you start doing this. So moving on to number five now, with the way the jungle XP has changed here in season 10 and with how important getting your jungler ahead in the early game is, it's really vital for you to just be paying attention to the map in the early game. Being the first person to roam for skirmishes is so important in the meta and it's not even important in this meta, it's just important for any meta. If you're able to be the first to roam from your lane, help your jungler out in a scuttle fight, help your jungler out in an invade, it's just going to make it so that you're early games are going to get so much better and you're going to be able to snowball extremely hard. Now obviously this is going to be matchup dependent. Not every single matchup you're going to be able to win the early shove and be able to roam first, but if you do notice your jungler's making an aggressive play, if he needs your help, if he's looking to invade, then if you have the ability to do so, look to hard shove out your wave and look to be the first to roam. It's actually kind of insane like how many early game kills you're going to be able to get just by doing this. Just being first to that roam, being first to that scuttle fight is going to allow you to pick up so many early game kills. So for number six, throughout the early game, think about what you should be doing with your minion wave. A lot of players are just going to mindlessly perma-shove waves throughout the early game. You'll see this a ton, especially with Yasuo players, or at least I see this a ton. They almost always just look to perma-shove waves, hard shove, just don't even care about their wave positioning, and they'll end up getting ganked a ton throughout the early game. So depending on matchups, depending on junglers, you shouldn't always be looking to do the same thing with with your wave throughout the early game and let's just run down a couple of scenarios here as to what you should look to do with your wave. So the first scenario and what we went over for number five is look at what your jungler's doing. If your jungler is looking to take crab, if he's looking to play aggressive, then look to push the wave, look to hard shove that and look to roam over. You want to make sure that you are taking note of the enemy jungler. So if they are playing a heavy ganking jungler in the early game, something like an Elise, a Lee Sin, a Xin Zhao, then it's going to be best a lot of the time for you to just let the enemy shove into you. Make sure you're not dying to early ganks until you can get adequate vision. And then once you do get adequate vision on one side of the map, make sure you're playing towards that or just make sure you're paying attention to the vision for when the enemy jungler is looking to gank you. You should also look at your matchup. So ask yourself, does this champ do better in an extended lane and if so then you shouldn't look to shove into them so if you're playing up against something like an Aurelia and a Kali or a Yasuo these champions do really well in lanes to where they're longer and to where they can run you down so if you're playing like top lane against the Yasuo and he can use the full lane to just chase you down if you've pushed all the way up to his tower then a lot of the time you don't want to be doing that unless you are in a very strong early game matchup to where you can look to trade with them but if you're in a weaker early game matchup, if you cannot trade with those champions like Aurelia, Yasuo, Akali, then you should be not you should not be looking to shove into them. 
Another good thing to ask yourself is do you have the stronger level two spike? So if you get level two before the opponent, are you going to be able to play aggressive and win a trade? And if so, then you should be looking to shove and hit that level two before the opponent. So if you're playing something like Leona Misfortune down in the bot lane, really good level two all in, look to shove for that, look to play aggressive and all in at the level two. So you just got to do a better job at just asking yourself, like, should you actually shove the way? What are the benefits to shoving right now? What are the benefits to freezing? And don't just mindlessly shove waves or try to stop mindlessly shoving waves because a lot of players do that and it just puts them in a lot of really bad scenarios. So for number seven, this is going to be really important for once you do reach the mid to late game and to where you're looking to control dragons, you're looking to control baron, make sure you're pinging out objective timers before they spawn. So at least like a minute, a minute, a half before an objective is spawning, make sure you ping that out for your team, ping like some assistant pings on the objective, tell your team to group around it. It's so important to do this because if you're able to get to the objective before the opponent does, if you're able to set up, you're able to get wards down, you're able to sweep vision, then if the enemy team face checks into you, chances are you're going to get a pick, you're going to get a very free kill, it's going to be a 5v4 for your team, so now you get that free dragon. If the enemy tries to contest into you further, you get another kill, you could look to do Baron off of that, or if it's even later on in the game, you could just straight up end the game off of it, so being at objectives early, paying attention to when objectives spawns is so important for just single-handedly winning you games once it does reach the mid to late game. So for number eight, start warding properly and at the correct times. Take a look at the early game jungle matchup. If the enemy jungler is playing something that can gank you in the early game as early as level two, then get a ward in before you even enter lane. If they're not playing a good level two ganking jungler, then you don't need to ward early on. You can wait a little bit to place your ward so it does have some extended time. Every single game, you should be warding differently. You shouldn't be warding the exact same every time. You should always ward depending on the situation. Now, pink ward placement is something that a lot of players screw up on in the early game and something you got to ask yourself before you plant your pink ward is are you going to be able to contest for that? If the enemy champion tries to go over and they try to destroy your pink ward, are you going to be able to contest for that? And if the answer is no, then it's not going to be worth it for you to plant it in that position a lot of the time. If you're losing lane, if you're falling behind and you're not able to really shove out in lane, you're not really able to trade much, then planting a pink ward like in the river bush or planting a pink ward in the side bush is not going to do a ton for you because the enemy is just going to walk down there and destroy it right away. If you're winning lane though, and if you're able to play aggressive, then you should be looking to plant your pink ward more aggressively. So look to move it up. You can even move it up like further into the enemy's jungle a little bit, um, depending on like how aggressive you're able to play in lane. So depending on your lane state, depending on how the game is going, you should be swapping up your pink ward positioning. For number nine, it has to do with correct ping usage when your laner is missing in the early game or just throughout the game, but more so in the early game. So many players are just going to be pinging completely incorrectly. They're going to think that throwing one missing ping down on their lane is going to be enough to alert their team of a roam, and that's just not the case. Like, you can't just throw down one or two missing pings on your lane and expect for your bot lane who's in the middle of a trade to start backing off or to see those missing pings. What you want to do to give yourself the best chance at just alerting your team of a roam from your laner is throw two missing pings down on your lane, only two, and then start to danger ping towards where the enemy champion is going, and then also throw a couple danger pings directly on your team. So what I do a lot of the time is I'd throw like one or two missing pings down on my lane. After that, I'd ping two danger pings as to where the where I think the enemy is on the map. So if they're in the river, spam a couple danger pings in the river and then after that I would just spam the rest of them on my team. So if you're able to ping like this and if you alert your team of the enemy laner's roam and they still end up getting a kill on the roam, then what you need to start doing next is you just need to start missing pinging on your team who ended up dying. So like throw six missing pings down on your lane that ended up dying and then just start flaming them after that. Of course, I'm kidding though. Don't start flaming your team. It's not going to end up helping you at all. But if your team still does end up dying after you do use all of these pings, then that's the best you can do, right? Like you can't, you can't do anything more than that. So as long as you're doing the best that you can to alert your team of the enemy laner's roams, then you can't really get mad at yourself for trying. 
Number 10 is going to have to do with finding the correct base timing throughout the laning phase. A lot of players really underestimate or they don't really even know how important getting a good base time off is in lane to just keep up tempo and to keep up pressure on the map. So if you're winning lane, if you have the ability to dictate when you base, then you should always be trying to base when the cannon wave is arriving. So in this lane state here, I'm pretty low on mana. I do have good shove with echo, so I can just hard shove in the wave, and then I can look to get a base in to reset for a dark seal and for boots. So I'm going to be doing this here. When the cannon wave is arriving, I hard shove the wave in before the cannon, based on the cannon wave. And as we take a look here in a second, we're going to notice that it's going to take the Silas a lot longer for him to shove in this cannon wave. So he's going to stay here. He's going to try to shove in this cannon wave, but the cannon minion is really tanky. It's going to take him a lot more hits in order to clear out that cannon so it just gives you a lot more time to get your base in and then get back to lane without really losing out on any gold or xp i think i missed out on maybe two minions there a worth of XP and gold, but for this base now, uh, Silas is going to miss out on a ton of golden XP because I ended up getting a better base off than him. I'm also able to roam over here. I'm able to get a pink ward, and now what I can do here is he's losing a ton of golden XP. I can just get a freeze on this wave and deny him a lot. In order to keep your tempo up in lane as well, you want to make sure you're not staying around too long after you do end up getting a kill. So if you kill the enemy laner, you don't want to be sticking around for like multiple plates if it does mean that you're going to be back to lane after they get back. It's really important to try to get back to lane at the same time as the enemy laner does because if you end up getting like a plate or something, you get a little bit of extra gold, but the enemy laner gets back to lane before you and then they shove in the wave, you lose that wave, and then they get like a roam play off bot lane or something something that's going to be really bad for your team and it's not going to be worth you getting that extra plate so you really got to think about just trying to be back to lane the same time as the enemy laner does so that you can keep pressuring them and so you don't lose tempo in lane. Number 11 is going to be a very simple yet very effective one, and that is to just start muting all. I was actually really surprised as to how many players just don't know this function is even in the game, or as to just how many players don't use it. If you're someone who tilts often, or even if you're not somebody who tilts often, I would just start using it because it's just going to allow you to play pay way more attention to what's going on in the game. You don't need to know what your teammates are typing in chat. What they're saying is going to be completely useless most of the time. You can, what you can do is you can mute all and then you can unmute pings. I think you should keep pings unmuted because they can still be useful at times, but just muting what your teammates are chatting, I think is something that every player should do if they are looking to improve. Number 12 is going to be a relatively simple one. It's one that you've probably heard before, but I still need to include it in this video because it is very important, and that is to make a champion pool of two to three champions maximum and only play two roles max. I would even recommend just playing one role if possible. Two roles is the max for sure. Do not play more than two roles if your main goal is to climb. The reason to why this is so important is because it limits the amount of variables that are in each and every game. There's going to be different champions in every game of League. You're not going to have a same exact game of League, or it's going to be very unlikely to where the exact same champions are going to be in the next game that you play. So you're going to have to change like how you play every game based on what champions are on your team and are, are on the enemy team. And if you're also playing a different champion every game, then you're just putting yourself at an unnecessary handicap because you're just having to deal with all these different variables. You're going to have to think about what combos you're going to have to use in certain situations, how you're supposed to play out a certain matchup. And if you just play one or two champions, if you just learn your matchups for that champion, if you know how to combo properly, then you aren't going to have to think about those things in the game. And you can really do a much better job at thinking about what decisions you should be making. And that's what's going to improve you as a league player. For number 13, it's going to be to just put your ego aside, and if you end up dying once or twice in lane, then just stop dying more. So many players just have egos, and you'll even see this like in lower elos to where they'll die a couple times in lane, and they'll just keep trying to fight the opponent over and over again. Meanwhile, their bot lane is like 5-0, and they're smashing lane, this guy has a free win, but he keeps on trying to fight, he gives the enemy laner multiple kills, and he ends up losing the game because he couldn't just accept the fact that his bot lane was doing well, his teammates were doing well, he had to win lane himself, he had to be the one to carry, so he ended up losing the game. 
Number 14 gonna be a really quick and simple one here and that is to just start watching players who are better than you and copy what they do. I remember back, I think it was in season three or season four when Bjergsen came over to NA and he started playing for TSM. I remember watching his stream and I would just try to like hyper focus on what he was doing differently in his games, tried to copy what he was doing in his games and implement that into my game. And I think this is one thing that really just improved my play pretty drastically. It's the one thing that I think really improved my play Play the most and it's really simple for you to do so just on YouTube you can search up there's like endless amount of videos on YouTube of other players like high elo players that play your champion that you can watch you can also just search up on Twitch uh, search up streams of players that are better than you and it's a really easy way to just improve pretty quickly Number 15 is something that I'd say at least like 30% of players that come to me asking like why they're not climbing, they struggle with this and they just don't play enough games. So many players just play only like 50 to 100 games a season or like less than 200 games and they expect to improve, but that's really not gonna happen. You just have to like, if, especially if you're new to the game, you just have to play a lot more games. You have to put yourself in different scenarios. Like League is not a game you can learn in like a month. It's not a game that you can learn in like a couple of games you need to be playing a ton of games in order to learn the game if you've played like a couple thousand games across multiple seasons then yeah of course at that point like playing more games probably isn't going to improve your play but if you only if you've only played a couple hundred games over each season or you've just started playing the game then make sure you just spam games and get used to different scenarios and then lastly here to round out the video, really important thing to remember is to just focus on the long term. Work on a few things at once. Don't try to apply everything I've told you in this video when you go into your next solo queue game. What you wanna try to do is focus on one or two things at once, get really good at those one or two things to where they become habits for you, and then move on to improving on the next thing. This is going to allow you to find the most long-term success and the most uh, elo gain throughout the entirety of the season. Don't think of season 10 as like a quick sprint. Like you're not gonna immediately go from like silver up to diamond in like a couple days or something. You could go from silver up to diamond throughout like the whole season. That is definitely possible, but it's not going to happen if you're in the mindset of just getting some quick elo or, imp or improving right away. You really gotta be in the mindset of improving over time, going to each game, not really caring about the outcome of the game. Just be focused on improving, focus on getting better at these things things in this video and if you do that you're gonna find the most success in the long term. All right, so that is gonna be all for the video, guys. Hopefully you do find this helpful. I do believe that if you're able to apply everything I talked about in this video throughout season 10, like I said, don't try to improve at everything at once, but if you slowly get better at everything in this video, I can pretty much guarantee you will see a drastic increase in your rank throughout season 10. So with that being said, guys, if you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you have yet to already. So thanks for watching, have an awesome day, and I will see you in my next video.